uh, can rejoice in the Lord. Okay, number five, how can we give him encouragement? Encouragement is say, I have seen your improvement. You will continue to do better. And I, I've seen your willingness to work on it. Yet, and you thought of some ways so you can work on it and you can improve. So give him some encouragement saying that you can do it and God can help you. So when you pray, you have strength and, and you will improve. Follow up. How can we find out his conditions, his emotions and actions, his improvement and lack of improvement? So follow up. So next time when we see him or when we see him in the church, we can ask him, how has it been? Uh, how is your emotions? How is your relationship now? To find out what's happening. Did he change? Did he change his prayer? Did he change his way of relating to people? Did, did he change his internal feelings and thinking? Number two, what is, why is it important to applaud him if he has done any improvement? He has any improvement. So if he has, uh, I ha he has, he said, I have said nice thing to him. Okay, this is wonderful, wonderful. That wonderful, you're improving. When you improve a little bit, you improve more and more. You improve 1% a day. 100 days, you improve 100%. So I'm very happy that you've improved a, uh, a little bit. And then this is a big step because you, it takes a lot of courage to be willing to change. Now, why is it important to encourage? Because then the person realizes that he has improved. He has improved, so there is hope. So he has motivation to change. Now, you might say, what if the person hasn't changed at all? Then we'll say, at least you listen to me now. Do you want to try to change? If you want to try to change, that already is a change. So I thank God you have that. So what, whatever we notice the improvement, we'll applaud him. Number three, what do we do if he has not done anything since the last session? So we still applaud him for coming back and, and are you willing to work on it? And what are some hindrances? So one final the hindrances. What what makes you uh, unable to do that? What are some hindrances? How can you overcome the hindrance? So what can you change this week? So we want to find out and then assign, give different assignments. So how do we adjust the assignment? So if it's too difficult, give him easier things to do. For instance, just tell him to thank God for 10 things and then he can think of 10 things and then he can be thankful for that, that if his inner emotions change, then his actions will also change. So even changing a little little uh, internal feeling would, um, would bring change to him. So this concludes the counseling session. And if you have any question you can send to me, please send it all in a Kenya group. Okay. Uh, I haven't seen any question. Okay. Now, I, I, I want to say this. I have taught counseling to many people and I find that it's very difficult. Many people still have a tendency just to teach and not to accept feelings. And I hope you will uh, start to realize the importance of that. And just think of how your spouse treats you. Does he accept you how you are or does he get angry with you when he's angry with you does he bring good result or does he bring bad result so what result does it bring to you when he doesn't accept you when he just command you to change now let me let us just go through the the points again steps of counseling first build up a trusting relationship so build up the trusting relationship with him and number two listening Pay attention to listen. Did you try to listen? I hope you all try to listen and then you can send me your uh, messages and say how you've listened to some people and how you have responded to them. And then uh, guide the counselee to express. So by repeating what he's just said, uh, by uh, uh, saying in a different way, and by asking questions that we can guide the person to express. So to, to uh, repeat what he has just said or repeat in a different way uh, what he has just said or ask him questions. Empathy and support that we feel the feeling of sadness of the person, we feel the pressure of the person and we say I accept that, I understand that, it's very 
it's not easy for you now is you feel unhappy now now I hope you all have done something to your spouse or children or church members if you have done so I hope you write in the group and send to me and say I've done this I've changed a little bit in the last week and this is the result I hope you will tell me and then I can tell the uh, tell the group to encourage other people to change and number five guide the counselor to analyze the situation and the problem so now here is trying to help the person to change first is analyze the situation and the problem so does it come from just come from the other person or does the problem also come from you and what are some root problem that cause uh, the relational problem and uh, so what has happened are these things re irreversible can one of you forgive and let go is it possible to let go so find out the situation that there is a problem uh, what is the root problem is the problem unforgiveness or unwilling to relate and listen and will unwilling to care um, I know most many people don't have the habit of caring they just have the habit of teaching and telling people what to do so we want to have the habit of caring for people and to guide them to analyze the situation and find a problem and imagine the best scenario for the future so if you change this how would it become how would it become how would you feel about that so do you want to change like that and then to think of ways to work on the problem so what are some possible solution um, for each person is different sometimes we start with easy problem and then we uh, go from the easy problem uh, to, to change the easy to change behavior help the counselor to start to change so what are some steps that you can start to change uh, so what are what are some possible steps and then follow up next time okay now before lunchtime what I can do is to use some case talk about some case okay now uh, has anyone have questions okay now let me use illustrations for instance someone doesn't want to pray comes to us he has no spiritual strength and we know that this person has no spiritual strength so how can we counsel the person the first step is to accept the feeling accept the situation so we ask them what has been happening the person says it's hard for me to pray I have no motivation to pray it's hard for me to overcome the sins and we say I know it's not easy I know it's difficult for you I know uh, uh, to overcome the problem is not easy so we accept that difficulty I feel unhappy with you and then um, so we we want to ask uh, the person you know what do you think that caused the problem what has happened to you that caused you to be you know, have no motivation to come close to the Lord to have a re good relationship with God what are some things that happen so if they say well it's because uh, God has not helped me on that certain issue then we'll, we'll say has God helped you in some other issues has God helped you in some other ways so uh, what is different about this time and what is your expectation uh, maybe you expect him to change the situation right away so if he doesn't change the situation immediately you feel very unhappy about that and you you can accept him so we want to find out and then or maybe he feels God doesn't care about him he's too weak he cannot do anything and then we guide him to change and say do you think God really despise you God this really do you think God just think you are useless and he says yes I I think that way and then we'll say um, 
What if I tell you how God feels about you, how God thinks about you? And then we can tell him that, you know, in the Bible it says that even when a sinner repents, the whole heaven will rejoice over him. And he sees any person, Jesus saw anyone there on the roadside, he cares about them. So he cares about little people, unimportant people. And he said, if you do any good thing to a little one, a little brother of mine, you have done it to me. So God treasure unimportant people. God treasures anyone. So anything, the Bible says that if you love him, he will prepare for you things you never imagined. Uh, so God has wonderful things prepared for you. Do you believe that? Do you, can you believe that? So we, uh, we can share some Bible verses to give them hope. And then can you believe that God is rejoicing over you when you say, God, please help me. Do you believe that God is really help, happy and say, God is happy that you ask for help. God is very, very, very happy. So we, we guide them to see that God is happy when they change. So you can start with the assignment of giving thanks to God for 10 things every day. And God is very happy. So every time you give thanks for one thing, you say, God is very happy that I give thanks. So the relationship with God doesn't start when we have a super strong relationship, even when you are very weak, you say, God, please help me. God, I want you. God is already very happy. God doesn't wait until you have improved all the way before He, he will appreciate you. When we improve a little bit, when we ask for help, He's already very happy with you. So do you think you can believe that God really treasures you and God gives you hope and God wants to raise you up to a higher level? So we want to guide that person, okay? Now, for instance, I use an uh, example of um, counseling a couple. Uh, a typical example is that the husband doesn't listen to the wife, doesn't uh, talk much, doesn't respond to the wife, and gets angry easily. And then the wife uh, gets emotional and necks him and uh, doesn't like him, complain about him. So both persons are problems. So how do we counsel them? Then we'll, uh, first we'll ask them if they are willing to be counseled. We ask them, uh, how is your uh, marriage? Now when we understand that they have some problem, then the next thing we want to do, we want to give some hope. Do you believe that your marriage has hope? Do you believe that your marriage can improve? Do you believe that God can help you? And, and if you change a little bit, your marriage can improve slowly. Do you believe that? And do you want to work on your marriage? So we want to ask these questions because these are very important root questions. Do you believe? Do you want to work on it? Now, if they say, I don't believe, they say, I don't believe. I don't believe that a marriage will improve. Then I'll say, um, are there any good things? So we ask them to name the good things about the other person. What has he done to you? What are some good things he has done to you? So name some good things. So if he has done this to you and, and then you keep working on it, do you think it will improve? Even a little bit, can you improve a little bit? If you can improve a little bit, can, then with time you can improve more and more. So we want to first give hope. And do you want to change? Are you willing to change? It's not just the other person to change. Are you willing to change? So they are willing to change. And then I will, um, in counseling, sometimes I will start with the teaching too. Now first, I will find out what happens. And then I ask them, do, they, do you have hope? And then, do you want to work on a marriage? They say, yes, that's wonderful. And then I would say, if I find out that it's the communication problem, they always talk negatively, then I will first I will have a teaching session, a short session of teaching. And I'll say, okay, at this time I want to talk a little bit about communication. Is that okay? I will talk about communication. If you work on this, your marriage will improve. Now first, about communication, the first point is the heart, the change of the heart. The first is that the other person is precious. Now let me ask you, do you believe that you are precious? So we ask each 
Do you believe that you are precious? If you believe that you are precious, can you believe that the other person is also precious? That God loves him? And there is possibility of change. So give them hope. First, well, before we communicate, it's very important to believe that we are precious and the other person is precious. So we want to say things that make the other person happy. So are you willing? Not just say things make them happy, but do things that from our whole life we want to make the other person happy. We want, when actually marriage we improve when we want to make the other person happy. Because when we do things that make the other person happy and say things that make the other person happy, then things will for sure improve. Even though it might not improve instantly, but it will start to improve. Okay, so are you willing to have a good heart toward your spouse? And then I will explain about communication. Uh, this teaching I have given in other sessions, but I, here I just briefly say it. The words of grace and the words of the law. We need to say words of grace like, you are precious, I like you, I love you, you are important. What you've done to me is very precious. So all the good things. I thank you for doing all this to me and I'm sorry for what I've done wrong and I want to uh, uh, make it up to you. I want to be nice to you. So these are all words of grace. And then words of the law is when we have to handle problems. And this is where many people have problems because when they have problems, most of the time they will accuse. They will say, you didn't do it. You didn't do it. So there is no hope. Now this will make the other person feel worse. It's not going to change. So how can we say words of the law? It's by guiding the other person. Guiding. So guiding uh, to, to find out uh, solutions. For instance, uh, f f uh, guiding the motivation. Do you believe our relationship can improve? Do you believe that? So talk to the person like this. Do you believe? And what can we do to, to uh, work on the marriage? Do you think our marriage will, uh, can be restored to the, our relationship when we were dating? Do you think there is possibility of change? And what can we do? So guiding the other person to think. Do you want to change? Do you think it's possible to change? So I, I, would, I would tell them, okay, this is one way of communication, guiding the other person to think of ways to change and the reasons to change and ways to change. And then guiding the other person to action instead of commanding, we'll say, let's clean the house together. Is it okay that you help me do this? I'll be very happy. I need your help. Can you do it? But if the other person says, I don't want to do it, then we can say, uh, okay, another time, but I appreciate very much and I need your help. Uh, please help me with this. Uh, if you just help me a little bit, I'll be very happy. So instead of commanding, we can ask questions and guide the person to, to uh, do some actions. And then we can guide the person to understand some teachings. For instance, the person always accused. We can ask now, if we just accuse each other, do you think it would do any good? How can we change our way of communication? How can we say things positively? How can we appreciate? Uh, is it possible to appreciate? Do you believe that appreciating each other would bring any good results? So all these are guiding the other person to find solutions. So if it's problem with the, so we, I teach them that this is the way that you can communicate. Instead of saying, you didn't change, you didn't change this accusation. Instead, guiding. Do you think we can change? Do you think our marriage can improve? And how can we improve? What can we do? And is it possible to do it? And then, uh, guiding a person to action. Do you, can we start? Now, we just practice a little bit. Can we say things positively? Can we say things that makes the other person happy? I can start with saying something makes you happy first. And then guiding to teach. Uh, uh, do you think we can talk positively? This is trying to teach positive talking. Do you think we can change a negative way of thinking? The negative way of talking, can we change that? And if we change it, how would it benefit us? If we change the way we talk with each other, if we 
talk positively, how would it affect our relationship? So this is guiding to teach, to teach the other person. And then the next is guiding to let the other person know he has done something wrong. So uh, you have not listened to the children, what would happen to the children? How would the children think about you? Now we want to try to say it gently. Do you treasure the children? Do you think they're important? Do you want them to feel good about you? And how can you change your way of talking so that they will um, like you better, so that the relationship will be better? And, um, and with each other, we can say, um, how can we talk with each other positively? And do you think the way we talk has helped each other? Do you think we can change? Do you think we can uh, talk positively and what do you think that what we have said to each other in the past how it affected our relationship so these are ways to guide people to give have hope in a relationship and to find ways to solve problem whether they want to solve the problem uh, how they can solve the problem and guide them to change and do something to help us guide them to uh, to teach to guide them to understand some teaching and also to guide them uh, to find out some faults. Okay, after I explain this, then I'll say uh, to the spouse, I want you to handle one problem yourself, okay? One problem, you can talk about it and agree on one problem we want to talk about. Instead of accusing, you say, okay, it, this has happened on the other day. Just say, this has happened. Instead of saying, you did this to me. This has happened on the other day. You did this and I did this. And then what do you think, what result do you think it will bring? And how does it affect our relationship? Talk like this. Now, some people say this is unnatural. We never talk like this. Uh, this is the way we can talk without making the other person feel bad. Because most people would just say, the other day you yelled at me, the other day you didn't, didn't listen to me. That is, it stopped everything. Instead, we'll say, okay, the other day, you talk like this and I talk like this and then what happened is uh, then we have a fight we yell at each other and then uh, can we solve the problem now and uh, where do you think we went wrong and how can I change how can you change so guide your person to to change so I ask them to do that but very often they would start with saying he did this to me yesterday Yesterday, he yelled at me the other day. He didn't listen to me. Immediately, they were accusing. Because it's hard to learn this way of talking. So I hope all the pastors and the leaders here will learn this way of talking to guide people. So in a way, when I'm on the process, when I'm counseling, I'm listening. And I will ask the question, okay, what did you just say? What do you think that what you said would affect the other person? How would the other person feel? And sometimes they will say, yes, he will feel unhappy. And then I can say, what can, how can you change? How can you change the way you talk? Okay, can you change it to a different way? And then he changed. I say, that's wonderful. Okay, can you respond? And then, uh, so they talk to each other. They respond to each other. So this is how I guide them to overcome certain problems. Now before that, usually I'll ask them to say the good things about their person. So tell their person using you. You have done this to me. You have done this to the family. You have been nice to me. You have take care, taken care, good care of me. So saying good things about the other person. Um, and then I ask them to talk about some problems they have and how they can arrive at some ways of communication that they can solve this problem in the future. So I will give them the motivation. Do you want your marriage to improve? If it improves, it will benefit both of you you enjoy it and can you have the scenario that one day you really like each other you enjoy each other you enjoy the marriage you are strengthened by the person you're encouraged by the person you the, the spouse is your great support do you want that kind of relationship so so we can ask them if you want this kind of relationship then uh, you want to work on it and it's possible if you just improve a little bit then you already will improve okay so I have using used these examples do you have any questions 
I see some 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 people wrote something there. Um, now, please uh, here in a Kenya group when I'm teaching, just send questions and tell me what's happening. Whether it's uh, so that I have um, so I will can I can see quickly. So here, just respond and tell me how it is okay now we're going to conclude with a prayer and I hope that you will practice this in the lunchtime talk to each other in a gentle way but don't talk to each other too close stay two meters away I know it's hard two meters away because this virus is uh, very contagious is very powerful and uh, so I don't want you to catch this virus from each other. So stay away and then you can talk with each other in a gentle way to guide the other person. If, if a couple come together, then the wife and the husband will try to communicate with each other in a gentle way. And then if, you, uh, if not, then two persons try to uh, communicate in a positive, encouraging way. So practice listening to people. So one person can share some problem and the other person can listen and respond and support and guide the other person to find solutions. So tr practice the, the counseling skill. Uh, don't, you don't have to do a complete counseling, but just practice listening and responding. And then give me the response on, uh, on uh, WhatsApp. Okay, let's... Uh, Close to the prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you because you have counseled Jonah to understand his problem of lack of uh, love, lack of compassion for the people of Nineveh. That you have guided him to understand his problem, understand how he really cares about himself more than he cares about people. So Lord, help us to care about people. Help us to listen to people to respond to people make people feel accepted make people feel happy and especially our spouse and our children that we want to build a a good relationship in the family lord help us bless us be with us uh, guide us in our future that we can be used by you help us to understand and accept this principle of counseling thank you lord jesus mm -hmm.